Hi scholars, this is Dr. Kennedy. I'm going to provide an overview of the ASA formatting style. I'm going to use the ASA Quick Style Guide, which you can find at the website www.asanet.org. Now ASA stands for the American Sociological Association, and the ASA have their own formatting style when you are using referenced material within your written work. So when you first open the handout, they provide you a little bit of a summary regarding what the handout is about, and then also an overview in regards to plagiarism and why it's critical to make sure that you cite any referenced material that you use, whether it be published or unpublished. And so as you scroll down the handout, you'll find instructions on how to cite what we call parenthetical or in-text citations. So this is guidelines for citing either direct quotes or paraphrases that you use in your paper. So the first examples are for citing paraphrases. And you'll notice the first example listed is in regards to using the author's name in the text. And so they'll show you that you will use the author's last name when talking about the referenced material. And then you'll put the publication year in parentheses. Now if you're going to use a sentence and then cite the author at the end of that sentence, it looks a little bit different. And you would use the author's last name and the year it was published in parentheses followed by the punctuation of the sentence. Now when citing a direct quote, the difference between the citation of a paraphrase and a direct quote is you include a colon and the page number on where to find the quote. And you also have to make sure that you put the direct quote in quotation marks. Now they put a note here letting you know the old way of citing direct quotes. Please note the old way had a comma, P period, and the page number. We no longer use this citation format anymore. We've uh, modified it and streamlined it so it's a little bit easier and quicker to read. And those people who are trained in ASA formatting will know when they see the year and then the colon, they'll know that the next number is the page number and where to find the quote. So do not cite in this old style. Make sure that you have modernized your citation style formatting. Now the handout gives you a couple examples for citing multiple authors. You'll see it's the first author's last name, the word and, and then the second author's last name, and then the publication year. It also talks about uh, citing three or more authors to make sure the first time that you cite them that you list all the authors last names in order that they appear on the publication. There's always the word and before the last author listed and then the publication year. As you cite them later in your paper once you've introduced all of them then you can use the abbreviation et al to refer to and others. So you would just cite the first author's last name space et space all there's a period, then a space, then the publication year. Next are a couple of examples for text citations when there's an earlier publication. So for this reference material, this was the first time it was published, and then this is the current year published. It also talks about uh, citing multiple authors of a paraphrase. So you, you might have paraphrased or use direct quotes from different references, reference material in the same sentence, and how you separate those using semicolons. So there's an example of that. Then the handout goes over complete reference citations, which are your reference list at the end of the paper. Now what's neat about this part of the handout, it goes over the three major sources, so books, journals, and websites. You'll notice the parenthetical citations that we went over on the first page of the handout, you always cite your parenthetical citations the same, whether it's a book, a journal, a website, a government document, it's always the author's last names, publication year, for paraphrases, and then for direct quotes, it's the author's names, year published, colon, and then the page number where to find the quote. So that format's always the same, but when you make your reference list, there's different order of information that goes on your reference page. So for books, here's the generic example. Um, so you put the author 
and then you'll put their name, but their last name's inverted, so that means their last name goes first, then their first name. If there's only one author, you'll just have this part, and there'll be a period here. But if you have multiple authors, you have to list them all. And you'll notice only the first author, that person's name is inverted. The other authors, the names are put in the correct order, starting with the first name, then last name. Always include the word and before the last author, and then there's a period after the authors, then the year of the publication, period, the name of the book in italics, period, the location of where the book was published, and then there's a colon, and then the publisher's name. So these are real examples that are provided in the handout. This first one is a book by two authors. You'll notice the first author, it's last name first. The second author, it's first name first. The year published, the title of the book in italics. There's a period here and a space before we get to the city it was published, then a colon to separate the publication city and the actual publisher's name, and then a period at the end of the citation. There are two other examples to show you how that works. And then it goes on to a journal article. In a journal article, it's very similar to a book. The first author, their last name is inverted, so their last name goes first. Then you'll list the second and third author with their first name first. And then the word and always appears before the last author of the published material. There's a period, space, year it was published, period, space. Then the title of the article goes in quotation marks. You'll notice the period goes before the quotation mark. Then you put the name of the journal in italics. There's a space, then you put the volume number. And then in parentheses, you'll put the issue number, close the parentheses, a colon, and then the page number where to find the article. So here are some real examples. Um, this one has two authors. You'll notice the first author, their last name is listed first. Then the second author, their first name is listed. The word and appears right before this last author. There's a period. Then the year it was published, period. Don't forget your spaces, okay, after the periods. Then the title of the article is in quotation marks. The period goes before the last quotation. There's a space. Then the name of the journal is in italics. There's a space. Then you put the volume number of the journal. Then you put the issue number of the volume. And this is in parentheses, no space between the volume and issue number no space between the issue number and the colon, and no space between the colon and the page numbers of where to find the journal article, and then the periods at the end. The other thing I want to point out about the complete reference citations is you'll notice the first lines are not indented of the citations. It's only the second line, and sometimes they might be third lines if it's a long pub publication. So when you're putting your reference list together, it's different than a paragraph. When you write a paragraph, you indent the first sentence. When you're doing your reference list, the first line or the first row of the citation is not indented, but the second, third, or more lines are indented. Okay? And the last one is the rules for citing a website. So you'll see if there's not an author, you would put the organization who wrote the text material on the site. You'd actually, in quotation marks, put the name, the title on that web page or website, the year it was, I'm sorry, not the year, the city it was uh, published in, the publication or the publisher, the date you retrieved that information from that site, and then in parentheses you put the web address. Now in the web address, do not include the hyperlink. You'll notice it's not underlined. That means the hyperlink is not on. If for some reason when you paste it in and it puts the hyperlink automatically, you can highlight it and then right click and then you'll be able to remove the hyperlink. So that gives you a brief overview of this handout and the major sources that are used when citing. Um, ASA Style Guide has the complete instructions for citing any type of source, whether it be a government document, video, film. You can also find some of those handouts online for free as well. Now, for my courses, I just want to give you a little bit more guidelines on how you would cite your parenthetical citations for the textbook and your complete reference citation that goes at your end of the paper in your reference list. So I included two examples of the most common books that I use in my classes. Uh, the first one is uh, Intro to Sociology. 
It's published by OpenStax. There are many contributors to this book, and the lead contributor is Kearns. So when you paraphrase this book, you would make sure that you would write your sentence that's paraphrased. So in other words, it has the author, some of the author's work, but as well as your original work integrated. You'd put a space after that sentence and then open parenthesis, type the author's last name, Cairns et al. And if this is the first time you're citing it, you'd have to list all the authors. And I do have all the authors listed in the complete reference citation. So it'd be Kearns, comma, Strayer, comma, Griffiths, comma, Cody Rydzek, comma, and then Sarkamuza, and there's an and before the last author's last name, and then you would put space publication year. So you would have to list all those authors the first time you cite it. After the first time, you can just use Karen's et al., and then the publication year, close your parenthesis, and a period. Now please note there's a space between the author's last name and et. There's also a space between et and all. There's a period and then there's a space from the period to the publication year. And that's uh, how you cite a paraphrase for the Intro to Soch book uh, published by OpenStax. There's a book I like to use in my critical thinking classes and that one's by Carl. It's called uh, Think Social Problems. So if you use a paraphrase, you would then cite in open parenthesis the author's last name, which is Carl, a space, and then the year that that book was published, which is 2013. Close your parenthesis and put a period. If I were to start my paraphrases by listing the author first, um, here's some examples for the intro book according to Kearns et al. And then you put the parenthesis publication year, close the parenthesis, and then continue your sentence, your paraphrase. And then for the uh, critical thinking text, I would put according to Carl, and then parenthesis, publication year, close parenthesis, and then the sentence. Now if I was citing a direct quote, there's a little bit of difference. I have to make sure I put quotation marks, then the direct quote, and then close the quotation. There's a space, and then you put the open parenthesis, and this is for the intro to Soch book. It's by Karen, so you put Karen's space et al. And there's a space between the et and the all then a period, then a space, then the publication year, which is 2013, then a colon to separate the publication year, and the page where you find the direct quote in the book. So the quote I found is on page 45. Close the parenthesis, and then your punctuation always goes after the citation, so the period goes there. And then for the direct quote for the critical thinking text, it's a quotation marks, the quote close quotation marks, open parenthesis, author's last name, Carl, space, year it was published, colon, page number, close parenthesis, period. Here's examples. If I started with the author in the before the quote, I put according to Kearns et al. In parentheses, I put the publication year. Then I put the quote. Make sure that the close parenthesis, there's a space before the quotation marks. Then the quote, close your quotation marks. There's another space and then open parenthesis. Now I put the page number where the quote is found. Here I do use P period space, the page the quote's on, 45, close parenthesis period. Here's an example for the critical thinking text according to Carl, in parenthesis the publication year. Then I put in direct quotes the quotation, and then I have to tell what page it's on in parentheses, and then I close with my punctuation, which is a period. Here's a list of the reference. The reference list has the complete reference citation. So the intro text has the first author, and you'll notice you have to list all the authors in the complete reference citation. And so make sure that you're including, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven authors for the introduction to sociology book. And in my example above, when you list them all, make sure that Vian is the last one. So it would be and Vian when you're doing your a complete your parenthetical citation. Your complete reference citation has their full names. The first author is last name first, the name of the text publication year, name of the text, uh, city and state it was published, then the name of the publisher. Here's the critical thinking one. And I hope these guidelines provided you some good examples and good luck with your written work.